I'm back. I'm back, y'all. With my post-game Buffalo reaction. I thought overall, as a team, we played with spirit. Uh, we protected our house. Uh, we shut a team down that had a pretty good offense. Um, we still made some mistakes. We got to continue to clean up, but we're seeing progress. The key is progress. We're seeing a lot of progress from this team. So the more progress we see, the better um, the results will be. First of all, my hat goes off to uh, Adrian Martinez. That's my Hot Wheels. I ain't even got no Hot Wheels. How about Wheaties? Let's go our Wheaties. Y'all remember that box? Our Wheaties. Y'all remember that box? Way back in 1997. Okay. This is our Wheaties box. Coach Osborne. So our Wheaties offensive player of the game is Adrian Martinez. Unbelievable game. He was 13 of 19 passing, 242 yards and two touchdowns. He also ran for nine carries with 112 yards. Okay, listen. That scramble he had was phenomenal. It was phenomenal. I would like to see him maybe do that three or four or five times a game. Easy work. Easy work. I mean, he made it look easy. Um, he didn't score, but that's okay. We scored right after that, and without that play, that was a pivotal play to make uh, that changed that game around. Football is a game of momentums. You may have the momentum one moment, but something happens, trip interruption happens, boom, it changed all the way back around. Okay? Uh, I, I give a just a special game ball, my Hot Wheels game ball, go to Sam. Uh, Torrey, he's still just cutting it up, man. Two catches, 136 yards, two touchdowns. Also, Kristen Man Hickman, he had three catches for 90 yards right out of Omaha, man. Shout out to you, Chris Hickman. And Betts from Omaha, two catches, 21 yards. Um, I'm, I'm hoping the big fella is uh, Austin Allen is okay. I know I think he went down and I don't think he came back into the game. I know he'll be ready for Oklahoma if, if he was there. Uh, look forward to seeing him next week because we're going to need him in order to be a mighty Oklahoma team uh, and on rivalry week. Let's say that again with me. Rivalry week. Oh, man. One more time, rivalry week. We're going we to break that word down. Rivalry. We're going to break down rivalry. I, I'm not even ready yet. Not yet. So now I got to go to my TyroneBird.com. Defensive player of the game goes to Luke Reimer. Wow. Walk on. Made good. Had a scholarship offer to the University of Buffalo. Said, no, I'm walking on at home. Those are the homegrown, the homegrown, homebred young lions that they're going to fight. They're going to fight. They're going to fight. They're going to fight. They're going to give you everything they got because this is their home. Uh, also, got to give a shout out to that defensive line. Uh, D. Daniels, great game, son. And uh, even Ty Robinson. Oh, my goodness. The big monster in the middle. Dude, all you got to do is use your hands a little bit better. Maybe go to the Crunk Juice School of Hands. <clears throat> Push pull. Okay. But great guy, great game, you two. Ty Robertson and uh Dar and D Daniels. Uh great games. Uh Luke Raymer though, nine tackles, one interception. <clears throat> Excuse me. Give the young kid. Give him the, the, the touchdown. Let's turn a blind eye to him stepping out of bounds. He did a great job. And I think he single-handedly has some open field tackles that, listen, most people don't make those. So, uh, shout out to you, Luke Reimer. That's my uh, TyroneBird.com uh, insurance. Go get it now. TyroneBird.com. But that's my TyroneBird.com uh, player, defensive player of the game. Let's talk about grades and total yards. So total yards, we have 514 to Buffalo's 359.
We had 296 passing and 218 rushing. They had 224 passing, 135 rushing. So uh, we did a, a pretty decent job. We'd like to see a better job of holding them under 300 yards of total offense, but we'll take that. We'll take that win. It was a big win. Um, only giving up three points. That was huge. But, uh, you know, some of my takeaways from those yards are misleading because if, if, if Martinez had 112 yards, that means our backs had about 106 yards of total or, or everybody, Sam Torrey, the option runs, I'm loving it. I think that gives us a lot of a lot of scariness out there in the open field where teams can't necessarily prepare for those. So I think we'll see a lot of those during Oklahoma. We don't see a lot, but I think uh, Coach Frost and the boys will unravel and unwrinkle some things uh, versus Oklahoma in order to beat them. Uh, this was a game of big plays. Game of big plays. The big plays, the big plays happen. And uh, let's take this hat off. The big plays happen. And it was uh, it was just amazing to see us make some big plays down the field. You know, that's what made Nebraska who Nebraska is. Big plays. We're going to just hit you, hit you, hit you, hit you. Boom! We're going to knock you out. That's how it works. You know what I mean? Hit you, hit you, hit you, knock you out. So in order to, to be champions, you have to be able to do that. You have to be able to get hit, withstand the hits, and not get knocked out. Shout out to Keith Mercer. Now, what you've all been waiting for. Rivalry week. Shout out to Keel Craver for giving me, leaving me with these. Can y'all see that? That's OU in you. I think Johnny's in there somewhere. Placement. He's on the ground trying to block somebody. But uh, rivalry. Definition. Competition for the same objective or superiority in the same field. Got that? Competition for the same objective or superiority in the same field. Here are some of the synonyms. Competition, competitiveness, opposition, conflict, struggle, strife, feuding, dissension, friction, enmity, antagonism. Oh my gosh, you got everything in a bad marriage. I'm just playing, I'm just playing, I'm just playing. Listen, you got everything there for a ultimate battle, an ultimate fight. Rivalry. That means... You ever had that kid in the neighborhood that you grew up with that just didn't like you? Wanted to fight you every chance they got? Well, that's a rivalry. If you ran, you lose the rivalry. But if you fought like a rivalry is supposed to be, that means who knows who's going to win? Throw out the stats. Throw out the stats. Throw out what Nebraska have done thus far. Throw out the Illinois game. Throw out the Buffalo game. Throw out the Fordham game. Nothing matters. OU matters. It's one team. One team that we have to beat. That's Oklahoma bums, boomers, sooners, hooners, whatever you want to call them. Everybody in the locker room has got to come together as brothers, have got to say, okay, we're going to fight as one. And no matter what happens, we're going to give them 150% of who we are on the football field. Do you understand? Is it clear to you? Can I tell you something? I'm not going to make this a quick show. Mm -mm. I'm taking the show to wherever it goes. 
period. Great game as a team whole. My grades of other games, because I want to get to OU, because listen, none of that matters. None of it matters. Throw it out the door. Doesn't matter what our record is. It's a junkyard dog fight. It's a junkyard dog fight. Leave it on the football field. When they say leave it on the football field, leave it on the field. Defense, I gave a C plus. I thought that was a good offense that they played. Uh, they got they got gashed a couple times. They let receivers get behind them, but they didn't give up a touchdown. They didn't give up a big play as far as for a touchdown. Um, and I thought that was big. I thought they played big. I thought our defensive line played one of the better games of the three games. And they actually got a little bit up front. They got a little bit of pressure. Um, offensively, I gave us a C. I thought we again we have to be we have to have a better run game than we uh, shown. That's not going to get it done against the big time teams. It's just it's just not going to get it done. So we have to have um, offensively we have to have a run game. Now we have big plays down the field. If you can get three or four big plays, that's worth 21 to 28 points. We'll take it all day long. We'll take that all day long. We can get three to four big plays. We'll take it. Um, coaches, I gave them a C. I thought that it was a pretty good game plan. Uh, I thought that we, uh, the option game plan looked phenomenal. I thought that we might have put that back into the holster and said we're going to wait till next week to maybe roll out a little bit more plays. Don't give it away too soon so they know how to block it. Um, it, it no, it's not going to matter. It's going to be 11 guys on offense, 11 guys on defense, one team plays for NU, one team plays for OU. Smackings. Smackings. Smacky McSmackings. Um, but I thought coaches called a pretty good game, and I also thought that. But, but special teams is still – farting around we still got bust on plays that should have been a peter call all day long um uh i'm glad they're not going away from him but he got he can't we can't afford that in big games you might never have that opportunity again so you can't afford to have that type of situation happen ball hits it trip interruption they get the ball short field momentum it changes It changes. It changes. So, I think we have to be a little bit more elaborate on offense. We have to bring more funk on defense. We got to get uh, maybe a couple of more, maybe some fumbles. You know what I mean? When I'm saying, I'm saying defense has got to get after the ball and pull some balls out that. We normally probably wouldn't get, but we got to get those balls. We got to get those balls. We got to get them out, and we got to we got to return them, and we got to get the ball back to the offense. Period. Uh, special teams F plus. F plus. I mean, we missed field goals. We have six points in field goals out there. I think maybe nine. I think it was six. Um, we muffed a, a punt. Let them get the ball. And so I'm just not very excited about going into rivalry week with this level of special teams play. You can beat the Fordhams. You can beat the Buffalo bullshitters. You can beat them. You can't beat the OUs. Can't make those mistakes. In order to beat OU, we have to play as close to a perfect game 
as we can. And Scott's, Coach Frost's entire tenure, this is going to have to be the best game he's coached. This is going to have to be the best game the black shirts have ever played. And this is going to, have to be the best game that the red shirts are going to have ever played in order to win. I think it's a big time rivalry. Um, I think it was 71, if I'm not mistaken. Um, when when Johnny, the, the, that was the, the game of the century, I believe, and and the Jet had the, one of the baddest punt returns to to go on the books from the University of Batter, from, from, prop, from the baddest punt return man that ever put the pads on at Nebraska. The living legend, Johnny Rogers. Um, this is a big game. This is a big game. This is one of those, you know, even if you don't win the game, as long as you show up and fight, we'll be okay with that. Even if you don't win the game and you show up and give it your all and we see it, we can live with that if you come up short. But if you lay down, if you get scared, poop down your leg. That's a different story. It's all you. Proper preparation or improper preparation leads to piss poor performance. Proper preparation Leads to championships. I ain't gonna say that again. I'm not gonna say it again, okay? So, let's talk about the rivalry. The first meeting, November 23rd, 1912, we won. NU 13, OU 9. The last meeting was 9, 18, 21, or not 21, couldn't be 21. 9 18, I think 10 of 2010 or 2012, and OU beat us 23 to, to 20. I think that was in the Big 12 championship game, if I remember correctly. Um, OU leads the series 45 to 38, which I did not know that. The largest, wait, what was the largest victory in the series and what year? Let me, I'm gonna ask that question again. What was the largest series, the largest victory, the largest margin of victory in a series? What year was it? What was the largest margin? And then what was the most points we, the Huskers, Nebraska, put up on um, Oklahoma? I'll give you a couple seconds because if you speed it up, I'm going to give you the answer. Okay? But. When I played, it was who's the Big Eight King. I mean, was it OU? Or who was it? I grew up watching this rivalry. Oklahoma versus Nebraska. This is for all the marbles. A lot of times, you got to win this game. Who cares what happens the rest of the games? I'm not saying that, but I'm saying that. I have never lost to Oklahoma in my career at Nebraska. That's five years, 93 to 97. Hey, it was a great time to be there. So I don't necessarily know what it means. In the years that I'm trying to tell you that we, um, the questions that I'm asking you. So the first question was, what was the largest victory? That happened to be my senior year, 1997, 69-7. Listen, we beat Oklahoma 69 to seven. Let me say that one more time. We beat Oklahoma 69 to seven. Now, I'm going to go to the year before that, 1996. We had our struggles. We had lost to uh, Jake the Snake Plumber in Arizona State. And the score was 73 to 21 in Norman. We dismantled their will to play football. We wasn't we was not more talented talented than they were. We did not have more talent. We did not have 
more speed. We did not have <laughs> the intangibles. What we had was heart. What we had was technique. What we had was discipline. What we had was a team. What we had was don't quit. What we had was we had no will to give up until the last whistle blow. When that whistle was blown and they said zero zero on the clock, whatever the outcome was, we got to accept that outcome. So, I don't care what we've done the last three games. We don't have a record. Right now, that's the first game of the season. Zero zero is our record. Oklahoma, we got a chance to be great. We got a chance to upset somebody that we have we have no business beating. Allegedly. But if you believe if you got the ABCs of football, A attitude. If you have the right attitude to approach practice, like it's your last practice, for the entire week of practice, you have the right attitude to getting a playbook. You have the right attitude to take care of your body. Be believe. You believe that you can get it done. You believe in your brother across from you. You believe in the coaching staff. You believe in the people around you that you're going to be doing battle with for 60 minutes. You got to believe you can get it done. C. Commitment. You have to be committed to the process. You have to be committed to winning the battle that you're going to be in every snap of the game. You have to be committed to eating right. You have to be committed to taking care of your body. What you do speaks so loud, you never have to open your mouth. And that's why I say, TyroneBird.com. Black shirts. Four-time black shirts. When I say TyroneBird.com, listen, I've never met a four-time black shirt. I'm trying to think of who it is. I didn't never play, I never played with a four-time black shirt, I don't think. Uh, Ralph Brown, maybe? Ralph Brown, maybe. Maybe Ralph Brown. Nah, I take that back. Grant Winstrom. Nah, he wasn't a four-time black shirt, though. No, no, no. That means you you starting. That means you one of them dogs. Abra, Abra, Abra. But this is rivalry. Week. You got to lay it on the line. You got to give it all you got. You gotta practice as hard as you ever practiced before. Oklahoma week. Oklahoma week. What you do speaks so loud, you never have to open your mouth. You listening straight from the hip. I'm your host, Rashawn Dr. Clairvoyant Jackson, a.k.a. three-timer, three-time national champ from the University of Nebraska, and I won't let you forget it. You're right. 60 wins, three losses in five years of college football. We can't forget that. Go Big Red. Big.